Hi there, John O'Halloran is my name. I'm head of the School of Bees, which is one of the important schools in the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, University College Cork. I'm about 10 kilometres east of the city now uh, at Photo Wildlife Park, which is an absolutely magnificent place that you could be. You can see behind me some of the, the most exotic fauna, I guess, and maybe as we chat this afternoon, we can see some of the native fauna also that forms part of this large area of habitat, of naturalised habitat, that provides our laboratory, our field laboratory, for the study of zoology, ecology and plant science at University College Cork. Amongst the studies that we undertake here, I guess very considerably, but I'd like to highlight a few in this particular presentation. And in particular, the teaching element, the opportunities for placement, but more importantly, I guess, is the em emphasis on research, because research actually, in all of the areas that we undertake, feed into teaching, whether it's at graduate level or in placements. So the connections between research and teaching are fundamental to what we do. They inform our curriculum, they inform the challenges, and they inform the technology that we have to seek to use to understand some of the ecosystem studies that we're undertaking. Let's start on a few of these. I mean, because of the proximity to the university, it provides our laboratory, a place where we can visit for classes, undergraduate students can visit here, and in particular undertake their important research project which forms part of all of the Bachelors of Science degrees at University College Cork. These Bachelor of Science degrees are divided into a number of credits and a significant portion of those are made up of individual research projects designed by your supervisor, academic supervisors, executed by students under supervision in this wonderful laboratory. So I know it's, it might be dark and grey today but sometimes it's sunny and bright, sometimes it's raining but that's part of the landscape in which we live. But more importantly, it's part of the landscape of the organisms that are behind me, whether they're the plants and animals, they have to survive and live in these habitats too. So therein lies the opportunity, the opportunity to see organisms free roaming, whether they're mammals, whether they're birds, looking at their habitat utilisation, looking at their behaviours. Why might we do this? Well, we do it for a number of reasons. One is to develop techniques, methodologies, experimental design, the rigours of what we undertake in our normal science. So the execution of a project is absolutely fundamental to any scientific training. And here we have the opportunity to take that out of the laboratory, take it out of the classroom and bring it into the real environment in which we live today. What does that mean? It means asking a question. The question might be, how do giraffes forage? How do emus run? How fast do they run? What are the biomechanics behind these kinds of uh, opportunities for these organisms as they fly and as they run and as they move? So what a student would then do is they would go out and collect systematic data over the day, because behaviours sometimes change over the day, over the season and over the years. And that helps us characterise the traditional, the normal behaviour of these organisms <laughs> as they forage in the habitats in which we see them here today. You might say, well, you know, this is quite an artificial environment, and yes, for some of the species here it is. For the exotic species, some of which are very close behind me now, and uh, hopefully they won't reach too close, uh, for these exotic species, it perhaps is a bit different from the habitat they normally live in. They're released from the big predators, some of which are caged and we'll see later, and they're also in different feeding environments. Nonetheless, we can actually capture some of the fundamental physiology, anatomy and behaviour of these organisms, whether it's on biomechanics, whether it's on plumage, and whether it's on the, the weight and behaviour of the animals. But beyond that, we can also learn to understand what happens when we are trying to capture them and enclose them, and the behaviours that that brings about sometimes, some of which are negative, and some of which we would rather get rid of. The other dimension, I suppose, that we shouldn't forget is this wildlife park, and it's a really important network of parks across the globe, both in this kind of setting, in zoo settings, and in much more open settings, where we can observe animals and organisms and begin the process of reintroducing species that have either been lost or become very rare in the past. What do I mean by that? I mean that some species have become rare or endangered because of human activity in various parts of the globe. To, sometimes by accident, sometimes through our bad design and sometimes between our bad management. At the same time, there are opportunities here to breed these organisms, look at their behaviour and reintroduce them back into the environment. And that requires understanding, it requires knowledge and requires the transfer of that knowledge to bring them back into the environment. We'll talk about the cheetah project later and we'll see some of the cheetahs. Uh, Tom Quirk, one of our students, our graduate students, our PhD students, was recently awarded one of the highest awards by the National University of Ireland Travelling Scholarship and he's working under the supervision of Dr Ruth Ramsey in my school and she is looking at and he are looking at the behaviour of cheetahs from a range of, of studies 
from simply looking at them in their behaviour, as we'll see later, how can we enrich that behaviour so it's a better place for them to be, and also to get them better biomechanically, measure stress levels, we can measure stress levels by collecting the faecal samples from these cheetahs and then measuring stress hormones in those. And because of the network of the sites that we're interested in, he has now, through the travelling studentship, actually gone to areas in Africa and we go to the United States to network into those networks of study areas and also of those species, where he'll undertake very detailed studies here at Cork, very detailed studies in Africa and very detailed studies in the United States. In Nib Namibia, some of these will be in the wild or bordering on being in the wild and in the United States they will look at the genetics of the species. Because clearly if you bring organisms into the, this kind of setting and you breed them, there's a risk that you will reduce the genetic diversity. So the genetic component right through to the behavioural component is what our studies on PhDs researches here at Photo Wildlife Park. And that's one of a number of studies which has been undertaken and continues to be undertaken at the Wildlife Park here and the university as a whole. So we've got a mixture of undergraduate programmes, PhD programmes. In the same way, part of our programmes is the opportunity for placement. Students have an opportunity to take some time in a setting like this, industry if you like, it's, this is our laboratory, this is our industry, and spend some time here on be looking at behaviour, looking at how the animals are looked after, the husbandry practices, and coming to learn and working in close proximity to animals. Some of these are extremely dangerous animals. It requires particular skills to work close with them, to work very collecting samples from them, how you behave and how to measure their behaviour. So these are really crucial to the skills that we want to develop in our graduates. So placement provides an opportunity to do that under supervision. We can give credit for it and it is the first step, I guess, in part of becoming somewhat independent as a pr practitioner. And that's what we seek to do here at Photo Wildlife Park in East Cork, about 10 kilometres from the university.